do some follow-up on work that we did uh, this last spring around the house and under the pond roses taking out a lot of this scrub oak I was trimming off some of the limbs getting ready to uh, take a look at the whole tree don't just go in with this idea that you're going to cut everything down because uh, as you start on it things might change uh, this is what happened when I cut off this partially dead limb off of uh, off of this oak uh, of course it's been raining a lot and so you know the tree is drawing up all the moisture than it can uh, and if you'll notice if you remember from looking at that cut that wound you can see that it's hollow in the center so uh, the top portion of the tree is fairly well dead and that limb is part of the reason why on the same side of the tree as uh, this main branch going up which is also mostly dead and uh, if you look you can see another hole right in through there and uh, this other split on the main branch is kind of kind of non-productive as well this below us here is a scrub forest and of course because it's downhill from the house this becomes a greater danger in case of fire it will move up the hill toward the house so you want to keep that cleared out but we spent probably a total of about 25 to 30 man hours clearing out just this section between the house and and here one of the other considerations is if a fire like that is coming through uh, you're not going to be able to stop it if it's that major uh, it's going to be roaring through here uh, in a firestorm and the only thing you can hope for is that some of this defensible work that you've done may cause it to go someplace else where there is uh, more fuel to burn you know fire is an opportunistic uh, type of beast and uh, it burns wherever the wind blows it and wherever it finds uh, finds fuel to burn. The other part of taking out much of this is that this place is known for its pine trees. Highland pines. It's not highland oaks. And a lot of the trees that were taken out of here uh, oh gosh in 2003 or so were beetle kill and they're across the valley uh, that's that's Ips beetle kill ponderosa pine and that's exasperated by all of this ground vegetation this ground vegetation is pulling up all of the moisture that these pines need as a natural defense against the Ips ponderosa bark beetle so that's the other reason that you want to come in and clear out your land where scrub is starting to invade. Number one, you think it's not going to burn when there's a fire coming along, but in drought, these scrub actually hold more plant oil. So they are able to function on plant oil. They don't need water. So they're sort of like little tiki torches or big tiki torches. Um, and the other, of course, as I mentioned, is that they're robbing moisture away from these ponderosa, and the ponderosa need that as a natural uh, defense against the Ips bark beetle. So you don't have to cut it all down, but you need to keep in mind that uh, the scrub oak is also uh, very opportunistic, and as soon as these pine trees died off from the bark beetle and they were cut down, it opened the canopy, which caused this scrub oak to grow more and to grow faster and to grow thicker which in turn becomes a fire danger if you don't manage the scrub oak around your property all you're doing is keeping a bunch of tiki torches 
around your house uh, for when a fire does come through. Be a better local. Take care of your property.